welcome to morning prayer. We'll just let a few of you come on. I am open to Margaret of Antioch. It's her commemoration. And Bartolome de la Casas, Apostle to the Indies. So we will have a look at Margaret of Antioch. It doesn't say a lot about her, but there we go. Right, we'll just wait for that. We um, the, the readings are all posted because I had time this morning, just about. Got four on. Hi, Pat and Ray. Hi, Christine. Morning to you. My candle's still not really working, so we won't worry about that. I will get a new one, I think. And then maybe I'll learn from David how to do them properly. Morning, Marlene. Morning, Sheila and Bill. Came back from my run today, yesterday. And myself and Georgina um, couldn't run. We had... Um, various things that happened the night before so couldn't couldn't get together for our run yesterday morning so we did it this morning and oh my goodness it was a hot one so we've walked a bit as well during it because it was just so hot morning kate morning pearl thank you for all those who have sponsored even if you can't sponsor just come out and clap us we're trying to go around the streets that um around Grange Drive where um, some of you live so that you can kind of wave at us from the window, clap us on. We'll try and run past you and then when we've got around the corner we'll walk a bit. But it honestly, um, uh, someone mentioned to me this morning that, oh, you've ran before, you're a seasoned runner. Well, it has never been easy and I would never class myself particularly as a seasoned runner I've never been fast and I've never been that great um and trust me that was 10 years ago so I am a little older and trust me we are sweating blood sweat and tears for for this uh so you will get your money's worth if you do sponsor us because it's not an easy thing I think um I, I tend to like to sponsor worthy causes, but I also kind of like people to work for their sponsor money <laughs> um, when I sponsor people. I know it sounds terrible, but um, it's true. Morning, Christine. Morning, Pearl. Missed you this morning, Pearl. We were, we were, we were tried to, we went a bit early because obviously Georgina has the school run. So that is important for her to be able to uh, get going. Right, it's three minutes past nine, so I think we'll begin. Let's just take a moment of stillness. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Morning, Angela. You sponsored us and shared our post. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, we're, it's Saturday is our run and I think we're setting off at about 8 o'clock um, <laughs> it might not be hot it might be thunder and lightning that we'll be avoiding um, on Saturday but do come out and give us a cheer and a clap if, um, if you can and do sponsor us two worthy causes our churches and of course um, Alzheimer's societies right morning Lorraine welcome to morning prayer our psalm this morning is Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my lamentation. Hearken to the voice of my crying, my King and my God. For you I make my prayer. In the morning, Lord, you will hear my voice. Early in the morning I make my appeal to you and look up. 
For you are the God who takes no pleasure in wickedness. No evil can dwell with you. The boastful cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those that work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty, the deceitful, the Lord will abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before my face. For there is no truth in their mouth. In their heart is destruction. Their throat is an open sepulchre, and they flatter with their tongue. Punish them, O God. Let them fall through their own devices. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out. For they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing out their joy for ever. You shelter them so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and with your favour you will defend them with a shield. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Morning, Valerie. Morning, Lisa. Ran past your house this morning. Waved at your open door. Morning, Jamie. If you would like to read the Old Testament for yourself, then it is Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 1 to 20. But uh, for the sake of the fact that I ramble a lot, we are going to move straight down and go to our New Testament reading, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 16 and going on to the end. I repeat, let no one think that I am a fool, but if you do... Then accept me as a fool, so that I too may boast a little. What I am saying in regard to this boastful confidence, I am saying not with the Lord's authority, but as a fool. Since many boast according to human standards, I will also boast. For you gladly put up with fools being wise yourselves. For you put up with it when someone makes slaves of you, or preys upon you or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or gives you a slap in the face. To my shame, I must say we too are weak for that. But whatever anyone dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I am talking like a madman. I am better. I am, I am a better one. With far greater labours, far more imprisonments, with countless floggings and often near death. Five times I have received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three, team, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. And besides other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is made, stu made to stumble? And I am not made indignant. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus, blessed be he forever, knows that I do not lie. In Damascus, as go the governor under King Aretaeus, Aretaeus, 
set a guard on the city of Damascus in order to seize me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. Here ends the reading. Well, there we go. There's quite a long list of stuff to um, there of Paul's trials. Um, he certainly went through it, didn't he? Morning, Leslie. Um, it's interesting that we almost see this uh, thing that we talk about now calling your truth. Uh, sort of coming out a little bit here. I think maybe in verses 16 and up to that first sort of paragraph, whereas he's 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 sort of saying that we we often believe people without really considering um, the truth behind it, and we have something now these days which we call your truth. And your truth, however crazy, however wrong or not true, is your truth and then that and that's okay. And that's that's quite a dangerous step. Now I don't want to get into too much politics because I don't believe meddling in politics is is my kind of remit. I leave that to more wiser people, but I do feel that I had a barefaced lie from the PM yesterday when he he said that he had not said that this last uh, easing of lockdown restrictions was irreversible. When he really did, I'd watch lots of footage of him saying that this lifting of lockdown is has to be irreversible. And now he's saying that he never said that. And I think that's bad. And, um, you know, we we saw President Trump uh, behaving in that way and being believed. And I think we have to suddenly wake up to ourselves a little bit. Let's not have a slap in the face. You know, let's not um, let somebody make fools of us, as it says in that first um, paragraph. We we need to be wise and discerning. We need to make sure that we explore the good science when we um, talk about things. We need to err on the side of grace. Uh, there's a lot of uh, posts on Facebook at the moment about why I wear a mask or why I don't wear a mask. And um, it's important that we think on grace with this especially us as Christians, walking out in the world, whether you choose to wear a mask or not, how you conduct yourself is going to be really important. Where we stand up for those, even if we don't believe that masks should come off, but that we support those who may be um, vilified for taking their masks off and vice versa. It's a uh, support and love of the other and acting with good grace. Now, of course, we know that masks are, are about protecting others rather than necessarily protecting ourselves. Um, but they do offer protection for ourselves too. So I just, I just want us all as Christians and you, know, you most of you are part of my congregations and I'm making my plea to you to be full of grace in these strange times because there is no rule now and so businesses might rightly want to be protective and others might not and we need to support in what ways that we can as Christians. Um, and, you know, Paul says himself, to my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. We are all, all um, easily led at times, easily confused, perhaps, or easily um, take somebody's truth and, and believe it. Um, 
So I, I advise you to be wise and to be more discerning if you can, knowing that we are all just but human and we all stumble. Morning, Leslie, if I accidentally say morning to you. Um, the other thing, I was going to say something about our run. We were running on Saturday to raise money for the church, our churches here in St. Margaret, Stanton and South Marsden. We are also uh, putting some of that money as well, half of it towards Alzheimer's. As good stewards, we give what we receive so that we receive more. If your hands are full, you haven't got any hands, any room to receive more from the Lord. So as we are blessed, so we feel we should bless others. And uh, Alzheimer's and dementia is a serious issue for many people now. And so we, we thought that would be a good charity to go for. Please do come out and support us. Thank you all those who have already given. Please do give if you can. Um, and we are in running around sort of some of the streets of Grange Drive and our map will be up and it will be in the pew sheet. And I'm sure I was going to say something else, but I can't think what it was. So maybe I'll remember for tomorrow. We're going to move on. We'll just quickly look at... Um, Margaret of Antioch, it's only a short sentence. Margaret, also called Mar Marina, gave her life during the Diocletian <laughs> persecutions. Diocletian persecutions at the beginning of the 4th century. Her preaching before her death is said to have converted many to the Christian faith. Well... That is something I can only hope and pray that will happen from my preaching. But there we are. Clearly a, a powerful preacher. And we celebrate her day today. We are going to go to our responses now. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. I've remembered. We're getting close to the target that we set. It would be lovely to exceed our target. So, um, yeah, do please keep giving, and thank you. The Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant Jacob. Oh, his servant David, what am I saying? Through his holy prophets, God promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. We come now to our prayers of intercession. Now is the time if there are countries, places, things, um, situations that you would like prayer for, people. Now is the time to do that. I ask you to wait until this point just because quite often um, when people are coming on, I, I lose prayer requests um, because obviously it's... Um, 
it uh, rolls and scrolls through. Now I think I've got a new one and I've left it in the other room. <laughs> oh, oh dear, I've got somebody on and somebody off, I think, and I can't remember who. Oh goodness. Um, never mind. Let me. Where's my phone? Let me see if I can find it and I will use it off of my phone instead, hopefully. Hopefully. Give me a moment and do uh oh hello, good morning. Ken. Ken! Thank you! <laughs> It's kind of useful. I'm going to miss you. Oh, desperately. Right, Ken. We'll put Ken on. And then I'll sort out the list. I did have a nicely printed out new up-to-date list and I left it in my diary in my file of hacks in the other room. Right, okay. Thank you, Mark. Right. Let's continue in our prayers as we intercede for our world and for ourselves. Loving God, we do lift to you situations around the world where there is war, disease, famine and, of course, COVID. We pray for peace in countries where there is war. We pray for support and aid in countries where there is lack of medicine, sanitation, and basic health care. We pray for all the environmental disasters that are going on and the floods. We pray that those, we pray for those who have lost homes and loved ones and businesses. We pray that some would be discovered that have thought to have been lost. We pray as they rebuild. And Lord, may we learn some lessons. May we become better stewards of our planet. So that all life may flourish, both human and, and creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our world leaders as they make difficult decisions between economy and care for the people in this pandemic. We pray those decisions would be wise, that they would be surrounded by good counsellors and scientists. We pray for their families who see the strain upon them. And we pray that you would draw alongside them and give them your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, Lord, in this lifting and easing of restrictions. May we all conduct ourselves wisely and with good grace to others. Those who have views opposed to ours, may we honour their views whilst disagreeing. We pray for our doctors and nurses. Pray for my friend who is a hospital chaplain who I met with yesterday, who has told me that our doctors and nurses are terrified of what might come. So we pray for them. We pray for our chaplains that support them. But we do particularly pray for all the staff within our NHS who are now very fearful of what might happen. We pray for courage, for strength, for support 
and that maybe these fears may be unfounded. We pray that this virus would not spread unchecked. That many will not fall foul of COVID. That long COVID symptoms would not happen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our teachers and all those who work in schools, universities and places of education. We pray for them as term comes to an end, that they would remain healthy and of good spirit and courage. We thank you for their dedication and pray that as the schools break up, that their workloads would be light over this summer, that they would have time for rest and respite. Live to you, Noel, Lisa, Nick, Gareth, Susan, Michael, Sue, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asher, Matthew, Sarah, Heather, Marie, and Michael. We lift you all teaching a student, uh, teaching assistants, and all those who work in our schools behind the scenes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our children and young people, especially for those who will be going into crowded spaces and nightclubs and places where there is le all restrictions are lifted. We pray for all our young people locally as cases and numbers rise. We pray that they would uh, be safe. We give thanks for our own children on our prayer list. We pray for their courage, we pray for their faith and for their mental and physical well-being. We lift to you Joel, Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Oscar, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Ellie, Evie, Charlie, Jack, Mia, Luca, Joden, Ethan, Aidan, Amelia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Morning, Janet. I return now to those who are unwell at this time that are known to us and are on our prayer list. We pray they would find relief and recovery that you would draw alongside them and bring them comfort. That you would guide doctors and nurses who care for them and that you would comfort us as we care and worry for our loved ones. We trust into your hands, Lord Trudy, Mark, Addy, William, Pauline, Linda, Roy, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, George and Maria, Bob, Mary, John, Mary, Mary, Jordan, Leslie, Wendy, Natalie, John, Janet, Annette, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, Peter and Hazel, Shane, Tilly, Ken, Jan, Linda and the family, Chris, baby Oliver, Anna, Angela, Mary, Roger, Chris, Martina, Troudel and the family, Andy, Catherine, Anne, Sarah, 
Nicholas, Martin, Pat, Jeff, Hilary, June, Tom, Julie, Esme, Nilva and her family, Len, Margaret's family, Finlay, John and Val, Peter and Bridget, and Nina, and her family. And Lord, I'm not sure if I put, if I said Ken, and Ken, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would bring healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sorry, I'm just crossing out one that I've remembered is coming off. And so we turn now to our set prayers. And we pray for all who are affected by the coronavirus for illness or isolation or anxiety around our world. We pray that they would find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping our national policies. We pray that they and other world leaders would make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the vulnerable and for the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying around our world and for their loved ones and families. May they know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our collect for today. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So the Lord bless us and preserve us and keep us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining with me for morning prayer. I uh, will see you tomorrow morning. Until then, enjoy the sunshine. Stay cool, safe and healthy today, which is going to be really hot. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and those whom you love. Amen. He's doing better. He's had his dressings changed. Thank you, Christine. My dog, uh, it, I, I thought it looked horrible. But um, the, uh, the, the, the veterinary nurse is quite pleased with how he's doing. So continued prayers that he gets better. Bless him, because he's all sort of strapped up. And of course, it's really hot. Bless him, he's got a really thick coat. So thank you for asking. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Caroline. So saw, saw Chris this morning. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for the hearts and the cares and all of that. It's lovely. It's an encouragement. It also makes sure that I know that Facebook hasn't gone. <laughs> um, so that's all good. Thank you for joining me for morning prayer. See you tomorrow. Bye.